Good morning, Math 370, and welcome to Monday Math Mania. I'm Nicole, and this is my math friend, Jenna. Today, we're going to introduce you to a topic in math that does not get enough love. Yes, indeed, Jenna, and that topic is grade groups. Here at Triple M, we love grade groups, and we want to share that love with the world. We're going to introduce them to you and give you some examples for you to understand. Oh my god, Nicole, wait, we almost forgot the math uh, joke of the week. Oh my god, I can't believe we almost forgot. What's this week's, Jenna? What do you call a bunch of dudes who love math? I don't know what. Algebras! <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one, Jenna. Thank you, thank you, Nicole. All right, now to get us started, we're gonna throw it over to our math friends, Steven, Alex, and Bo. Hey guys, Steven here. And I'm Alex. Today we're gonna to talk about grade groups. Grade groups were introduced in 1925 by Emil Hardin and are found in the mathematics branch of topology. Imagine several strands that all start on the same plane and end at another plane. These strings can overlap and cross several times during their journey. A braid is composed of n strands which cross over each other a finite number of times without intersecting. They all travel in the same direction. This is a braid. The two brown ends represent two planes that the braid that the strands travel to. As you can see, the strands intertwine and cross over each other. Strand one crosses over strand three, and strand two crosses over strand three and four. The symbol is braid, the identity braid, consists of four strands that do not cross. The first thing that we can note about braids is that we can compose them. When we compose two braids, we simply attach one braid to the end of the other. The strands and colors from the first braid carries through the second, following along the new path presented. Now we'll take it over to Bo, who will talk about the basic properties of braid groups. Hey guys, Bo here. Let's go over some properties of braid groups. Um, they are associative. So A times B times C equals to A times B times C. But they are not commutative. A times B does not equal to B times A. The inverse of a bread can be obtained by reflecting the whole bread over one of its planes. A times 1 over A equals 1, and 1 is identity bread. There are also several elementary breads, each with their own inverse, sigma 1, the first two strands, twisted clockwise. Sigma 1 inverse is first two strands twisted counterclockwise, and sigma 2, the second and third strands twisted clockwise. Sigma 2 inverse is twisted counterclockwise. Sigma 3, the third and fourth twisted clockwise, and th sigma 3 inverse twisted counterclockwise. Now, we can use these elementary braids to construct any other braid. Longer complex braids can be split into blocks. For example, sigma 2, sigma 1 inverse, sigma 2, sigma 3, all create a longer braid with strands intersecting in the order of the elementary braids. The elementary braid and its inverse, when next to each other, cancel out to become the identity braid 1. Sigma 2, sigma 3, sigma 3 inverse, sigma 2, sigma 1, equals sigma 2, sigma 2, sigma 1. Sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 1, equals Sigma 2, Sigma 1, Sigma 2. Wow, I don't know about you guys, but that was an awesome lesson from our math friends, Stephen, Alex, and Bo. Thanks for joining us on another edition of Monday Math Mania, everyone. And don't forget to tune in next Monday. We'll be having more fun with Morse theory. Woo!
Oh, it's scary. We just start, we just stop.